tricky in that spot. All right, last thing of the day, Jimmy Butler. Wes, talk us through this. Jimmy Butler reportedly from the – as reported uh, by Sam Amick, I believe, on the one of the yep. Athletics NBA shows, said that the Warriors – had some interest in Jimmy Butler, who was last year of his deal looking for an extension that he hasn't signed as of yet, and that the Warriors may have made some calls this summer about Jimmy Butler. Is this a, is this a thing you could see happening, Wes? Jimmy Butler to the Golden State Warriors? Um, short answer is no, uh, because both of those teams are in cap hell. The luxury tax, second apron, blah, blah, blah. It just makes it really hard to pull off a trade without like getting another team involved or one of these teams... Um, like Miami basically taking on equal or more money just to be worse, you know, like, so it's just, I was on a Warriors podcast with a friend last week and we were trying to talk through the deals and like every deal that I thought worked for Miami didn't work. Like the Warriors wouldn't want it and vice versa. So, um, I don't really see it happen. I think the basketball fit is great. I think Jimmy Butler as an inside out player playing next to Steph as an outside in player, yin yang kind of combination. I think that works. Um, Jimmy Butler, I know it makes sense from the Warriors standpoint because they've been so desperate to find a co-star for Steph, right? We know that they were trying to get Paul George, Larry Markkinen. There was that ESPN report that they called the Lakers about LeBron James in February. Like they're looking for a co-star and outside of LeBron, obviously, who was never really a realistic target, like Paul George, Larry Markkinen, awesome players. Jimmy Butler is a different cat. Like that's on another level. That guy's NBA finals tested. And if you're trying to maximize the Steph Curry window, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago, Jimmy Butler is one of those guys you could do it. Jimmy Butler is still looking for his first ring, hungry for that. Steph Curry, can he go get his fifth ring? Jimmy Butler can help him get that. Um, but again, I, I, to me, my takeaway from this was that all the things that we've talked about with Jimmy Butler, um, mm -hmm. this could be a contract year. He's got a $52.4 million player option next summer. That's a lot of money to say no to. So I think there's this overwhelming assumption that Jimmy Butler is just going to be a free agent next year. I'm not assuming that. Until he says no to $52 million, I'm not assuming anything. So uh, that said, he's the ball's on his court, right? It's a player option. He makes that decision. Um, but despite the fact that the Heat don't really have a lot of control over this situation, they got a phone call about Jimmy Butler, and they said no. He's not available. That's sort of the unsaid thing in this report is, oh, my yes. God, is Jimmy Butler on the trade block? No, clearly he's not because they did not entertain that phone call. Um, and so uh, I think there's a lot of teams around the league with their eyes on Jimmy Butler and how this situation plays out. And that's not to say that he won't ever be available, but right now he's definitely not available. Miami is not entertaining phone calls on Jimmy Butler. Um, so that's that to me was the interesting part. I agree. Where my brain also went was wondering about, okay, I put myself in Miami shoes on the other side of it and thought about, okay, let's say they decided it's time to refresh this go forward what's the path go into like the full-on bam out of bio era where this yep. is now bam's team yep. there's work to i think there would be you would need to get stuff back from the warriors in terms of picks that like that's really what the Warriors are offering like i i like some of the like if you got kuminga back whatever like that's fine that's not immediately keeping you at the level you're at now that jimmy has helped you sustain the last several years like this would feel like you're saying, bam, we got you paid. You know, we understand you want to compete at the highest level. You're probably one of the most competitive guys in the league. We believe in you as like a franchise pillar for us. But we need to take a second here just to like reset, breathe, and pursue some of the, something else, you know? Yep. We need to go after finding a co-star for you. We need to go find a Jimmy replacement. I don't know who that is. The market obviously shifts all the time and stuff gets sorted out and figured out. But Bam at 26, like you have time theoretically with him where you don't need to rush into giving him ever like doing something crazy at the short. You're not in the you same, you're not to... in the same time yeah. crunch as you are with Jimmy Butler, where it's why this like, team has chased Damian Lillard, Kevin Durant, exa like exactly. veterans. Yeah, you, could you would not build... chase a 34 year old with right. Bam. And that opens up options because you could still get a 34 year old with Bam. Bam's been in two NBA finals. He's ready to win a championship right now. He's good enough of a yeah. player to be the second best player, I think, on a championship team. So if that 34 year old comes around, then fine. But you also have that other option of, well, let's kind of slow, let's slow build this thing a little bit more. Um, I, and I would prefer you. that if I were, I would prefer that if I were them. I think if you're going to move on from yeah. Jimmy, I don't think you can like 
skip a step and no, like if I, Donovan I, Mitchell I'm with became you. available. That's like that's like the if Donovan Mitchell became a thing again in two years or whatever or a year if things go really badly. Sure, like that's the guy that I think that would fit the most perfectly with what they yeah. do. I'm not really a Trey Young and Miami guy. I don't really see that fitting from like a culture and vibe standpoint with Trey and, and Spo. That just doesn't mesh to me. And then like you look at the other young guys in the league. I don't know if the one that would really move the needle in a big way is like we quite know that those guys are actually available and they're like SGA right. is not becoming available. Luca's not right. becoming available. Like you kind of need someone else to like, you need something else to really break or down if in that, a big way. If that player that isn't available, if that player isn't available now, then you need to get stuff in a Jimmy Butler trade that helps you go exactly. get that player in a year yeah. or two when that player becomes available. I, I think Jonathan Kaminga is a good player. I don't think he's that player. He's not I, the I, I, he's not a crux of a superstar trade. Like if he's like the best player you get back in a Jimmy Butler trade, that's and not Kaminga a trade. Has, I, I mean, some some not a press some people good about some people would disagree with you. There, Kaminga yeah. has a lot of big fans across the NBA. I do agree with you for the record. I don't think he's that player. Um, the other part with Kaminga is that he's up for his own contract extension too. Exactly. So, so if like you were doing this at, as Miami, you would be swapping one contract situation out for another. And I don't know that you want to give Jonathan Kaminga is reportedly out there looking for a max salary. And the Warriors have basically told them no way. And I think they're right in doing so. He'll be a restricted free agent next summer. And they say, go find one. You're a restricted yeah, free agent. Sweet. Go find one. Yeah. And then we'll decide whether or not we want to match. Uh, I got news for Kaminga. Unless he has a huge season this year, like an unprecedented kind of leap, that max contract ain't coming. But whatever. No. That's his problem. Um, so if I'm the Heat, I'm looking for something like what – the Thunder did when they traded Paul George to the Clippers, they got Shea Gilgis Alexander back. Shea Gilgis Alexander was not even, nobody thought he was going to be what he is now. Yeah, and really I remember really, talking with people yeah. on the Clippers organization during Shea's rookie season, and they said, this guy's going to be special. Nobody predicted MVP ballot special. Top, so, yeah, like a, a guy that could win the MVP this year and is like, just feels pencil into top. But you need a chance. You need to be able to take a chance on a guy like that. So if I'm the Heat, I'm looking either for a guy with an opportunity to be that, with a little bit of runway before I have to decide if I'm going to sign him to a max extension also, by the way. Like, if I'm the Heat, that's why I'd rather have Brandon Podzemski. I think Jonathan Kaminga will probably be a better player than Podzemski. I think the or odds are that he will be. But at least podzemski has got a couple more years before I have to pay this guy. Um, you know, that's that's the kind of thing I'm looking for, is a little bit more upside or a little bit more runway to make that kind of decision or draft picks, other stuff that can help grease the wheels on a trade down the line. Because I think when you trade a superstar player, you better trade him in a way that improves your chances of getting your next superstar. It's yes. really difficult to trade a superstar just for role players, just for stuff. It, that's a really tough look. I mean, even Philadelphia, when they traded James Harden last year, that opened up cap space for them to go get Paul George, even though all they got was role players. So yes. one way or another, when you trade a superstar, you better open up some avenues to get your next superstar. Yeah. From the Warrior side of it, I did it from like a pure talent play that aligns on your age. It's like, this is the team that wanted LeBron last year. Like, we, we know this. Mm -hmm. This is like the age of the superstar and a serial competitive guy. Who you say, okay, we have a couple years left with Steph. Let's just get the best player we possibly can and just chase it. That's what this feels like to me. Is he the perfect guy to go get in terms of, like, if you pick the best option? Maybe not for, for them chasing a championship. Like, you need to, like, find a way to keep one or two of the young guys, I think, and and really, like, nail some, like, moves on the edges, probably figuring out what to do with the Wiggins as well, I think just remains, like, a big yep. obstacle for me and ever envisioning Steph getting another title, as, as we've talked about. But in terms of, like, a guy that I would love to see play with Steph, Jimmy and Steph would be incredible. Jimmy, be and awesome. with his ability to, to be strong, create looks for others by getting into the paint, the foul drawing, I think, would be a good diversification of, of what they've been offensively for the last decade or so, and obviously different forms here and there. And Jimmy being a guy who can then like find Steph and some improvisation between them to get Steph like quick, quick hit, quick hitting threes on the perimeter. Him and Draymond as just like tone setters in a locker room would be astounding to to see how that would play out over the course of a season. I would be fascinated by that. But I'd like I the more I thought about it, Wes, I liked the idea of Jimmy with the Warriors if they're gonna go pursue one more Jim Steph yeah. Curry ring. Like I did really like it the more I thought about it. 
this is the kind of player the Warriors need to find is a physical player, a player who can provide more backbone defensively outside of Draymond Green, a guy who is, as Draymond Green calls him, a 16 game player. Any acquisition you make of the Warriors is geared towards not getting better, but getting good enough to win a championship. You've got Jimmy Butler and Jimmy Butler could be your second scorer. I mean, he would be your second scorer. I think the problem with the Heat right now is they don't really have a primary scorer, right? Jimmy Butler doesn't want to be that guy. The most he's averaged in a season is like 22 points per game. They don't have like that 26 yeah. point per game top 10 scorer. Steph Curry is obviously that guy. The Warriors problem is that they don't have a number two scorer. So the Heat have a number two score, no number one score. The Warriors have a number one score. I don't know. They don't have a number two or a number three score for the record. But Jimmy Butler can obviously walk in and be the second most impactful offensive player. You could stagger them. You can have Jimmy and Paul George as or Paul George and Steph Curry, as you would with any other kind of superstar, Jimmy Butler or otherwise that you would acquire. This is exactly the kind of thing that the Warriors need to be thinking about. And it's why they've been shooting for the stars, right? It's why they've been asking for LeBron. Lowry Markinen, who I think is still a notch below what we're talking about here. Um, but there's a reason why they didn't include Kaminga in their best stuff for Markinen. It's probably because they were aware that Kaminga isn't up to the same standard as these guys. It's the reason why they were trying to get Paul George, right? This is the kind of player they need. Jimmy Butler, otherwise, I think they're thinking the right way. It's just a lot harder, as everybody knows, to actually pull off those deals. It's easy to plug in their names into the trade machine and wish. It's harder to actually pull off those deals. And that's the part where the Warriors run into is, I, I just don't know that they have the assets to go get that guy, but heck, they're trying, man. They're trying. Do you like the last the last thing I'll ask you, Wes? Do you like Paul George or Jimmy Butler? That if you're going to pick a type of player, which of those players would you have liked better for them if they were would have been able to Jimmy Butler? This no question. I agree. It's not a Jimmy question. Butler. No I question. I mean, we're talking about a guy like Paul George has playoff experience. He has no NBA Finals experience. Jimmy Butler's been in two of them, and he plays great in every NBA Finals. Like, if you're Steve Kerr, Joe Lakeup, Mike Dunleavy Jr., Steph Curry, Draymond Green, you just feel so much better going to going into a big game with Jimmy Butler than you do Paul George. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, um, I'm in agreement. I think just Jimmy as an offensive engine instead of, like, a guy who fits with you, like, who kind of, like, adds to everything and is, like, great point. Is like the icing on the cake. They need Jimmy's that little more... extra... Um, on all, they need that real yeah. option to play through on offense. That's not the Steph Curry, Draymond Green pick and roll, or Stefan or yeah. Steph Curry making magic happen. Yeah, and like we've, been, I think everyone's been saying this about the Warriors for forever at this point. It feels like, but like, I think particularly as Steph gets older, it becomes more important. Like it, it just yeah. is. There's a reason like him and LeBron would have made a ton of sense in theory because like LeBron's going to create a bunch, and it's also going to make life easier for Steph to do the thing that he makes him one of the most unique superstars we've ever seen, which is flying around off the ball and being willing to sacrifice touches for the sake of driving defenses in hell. And if you're telling me if you're a defender and you have to pick between Jimmy Butler putting you in hell and getting to the rim and getting fouled or getting a tough little midi, or you have to make sure you don't lose Steph on the back end, it's like good, good fucking luck like yeah. dealing with that two-man game if you surround the rest of it with shooting yep. and, and a guy in the dunker spot. That's why the Warriors were so interested in Giannis when everybody was interested yeah. in Giannis. Like, they had plans of chasing Giannis before he ended up signing this last extension. There, there was an awareness that that's exactly the kind of player that they need. It's why, and by, doesn't, like you, it's not rocket science. Like, this, these no. players make sense. There's a yin-yang balance with players like that. Um, Jimmy Butler certainly in that category um but we'll see what happens